Okay, well, I want to play. And everybody was very happy. So, uh, if I could just take one second. If people can mute their computers, we had to unmute this for the upside people that are. Thank you very much. My name is Tom. Okay. Just one final thing. Um, we impressed our guests and we're very happy with the course. Oh, and yeah. our volunteers did an outstanding job. We're very happy. I have to say thank you. Any questions? Robert? Yes. How many is coming in the They're going to cap at 120. You have no idea now how many? They had 74 as of Monday. That's what I say. They said, huh? That's total. 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 Yeah. They sent out a uh, blast on Monday. You know, right. you mean, uh, people to bring down. Oh, well, they're capping at 120. We had, I think, 110 last year. Yeah. And they raised the cost a little bit. As a Monday, but I think it's probably going to be, you know, we want to find out. That's also everybody's brain, so. Okay, I apologize, Ted. I skipped right over you. <laughs> uh, so I back up. Yeah, I <laughs> really don't have anything to add to uh, what's going on. So it's, I mean, it was just kind of quiet for the board side on the golf piece. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, uh, Lori, nine hundred. Um, we have one hundred and sixty-two members. We are hosting next Thursday the Women's Nine Hole Golf Association team play here, and I believe there's five other teams, maybe only four since Round Hill dropped out, but we'll be coming and playing in Rossmore. Um, we are in the midst of our eclectic, eclectic tournament. Uh, April is the second month that runs through September. And our play days are going on every Thursday. And I don't really have much else to report. Okay, thank you. They may have the best participation now. You had 79 on yesterday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And your membership is what? 162. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very high percentage showing up for a round of golf on a Thursday. So, congratulations to the Niners. You're keeping us busy. <laughs> and what's the secret? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's was it was the 18th. Yeah, was the Yeah, the Okay, yeah, men's club. Okay. First of all, I'd like to welcome Mark back. I'm <laughs> listening. <laughs> And Burke. Merci. Well, Burke as well. That's right. We'll see. Uh, the men's club currently has uh, 324 active members, and that is including 18 sponsored guests and two golf shop members. So 324 total. The home and home season and home and away is on, well underway with play dates uh, with Oakhurst, Berkeley, Sequoia, and Arinda during the month of May. We're anticipating, uh, I'm sorry, we participated with the 18ers in sponsoring the Cinco de Mayo day of golf after uh, lunch and, uh, and the games and the event center on May 3rd. Our 12 man traveling team play is underway. The team currently has 21 members available for play. And finally, we hosted the uh, first tee of Contra Costa this past Saturday with a total of 18 boys and girls playing on the Creekside course. And the play was preceded by lunch and a putting contest. Prizes were given to all players. All, all, all the kids that came, we gave them a sleeve of balls for participating. And then additional prizes were awarded for the best uh, boy and girl for putting. Closest to the pin on number seven and the best Low gross and low net scores for a boy and girl. I want to just shout out thanks to Jackie and the staff and the golf shop for helping make it a successful event. Um, I have one past piece of business that I'd just like to bring up, if I may, part of the men's club request. Uh, and Mark, and that was uh, relating to the 15th hole once again. What we discussed last meeting was that. Uh, we were looking to possibly have some markers placed out there along the um, the uh, left hand side on the, at the side of the hill, so we can determine or golfers can determine where their ball goes into the 
uh, hill if they do. And you were uh, uh, said that we would take a look at that once the uh, the hill growth had been mowed down. Mm -hmm. So it has been mowed down. I've had a number of requests from men's club golfers to uh, take a look at that. In addition to, and I hate to bring it up, but uh, because it's still there, probably the uh, drop zone somewhere. Not where it was before, but the drop zone where along along the uh, fairway. They don't need a drop zone. There is none. I know. You don't need one. That's not the rule. Well, I know, but as a local rule, you can believe it if, if you want. If, again, again, I said it's not something that I want. Well, we can, we can discuss that. that. That's not the rule right now. There, there's no need for a drop zone. You just simply work across the right. line. Right. You drop it on this, wherever the entry point is, so there wouldn't be a drop zone. It depends on where it crosses. The whole thing's a drop zone. Well, that's where it crosses. Yeah, that's the uh, USGA. Yeah, rules that's, and we're that's, following that. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's there isn't anything else needed. No other local rule on it. Won't. No, okay, not needed, not okay. needed. Yeah, that's the answer. And I will, I will, um, I'll discuss the probably a good topic for that. Um, um, putting up markers and stuff. I'll discuss during Blake's report. Okay. By the way, just on that, if we were to do something like that, I've already discussed it with the. Uh, the uh, woodworking shop, and they'd be happy to work, create something for us if we wanted to. Cool, that's great. Uh, that's my report. And uh, nothing, there have been no problems with uh, getting guests in through the gate? Or is there uh, no, everything's we, okay. I, I uh, really tried to find if there was going to be any additional uh, requirements by the uh, <laughs> front gate. I was told that what they're doing is taking uh, copying license numbers and or license driver's license information. And with the first tee, is the event that I held, uh, we had a lot of people coming in here. And uh, I asked, excuse me, try. I asked specifically uh, if they were if there were any issues coming through the gate and. They said no, not not at all. They just asked them who they were, and they just came through. So whether they're taking uh, license numbers or copying things down for others, I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you. Well, on a side note, I had some ladies from Marinda Road Runners that we got on Wednesday morning came here so I could take them on a bike. And one of the ladies, I didn't even think to say bring your driver's license. If you're driving, don't you have your driver's license? Yeah. Well, she doesn't carry hers. She has a picture of it on her phone. Oh. And she said they gave her a lot of grief, yeah. but they eventually mm -hmm. let her in. But wow. I mean, so I think we need to stress bring your driver's license. Yeah. I don't know if other people do that. Well, I asked, I asked, <laughs> I asked the, uh, I asked those at the first tee that were driving to have their, you know, it's on your driver's license. Yeah. And I said, I, would, I had heard at one time there was also a phone number or a email address. Mm -hmm. And so I asked them at least to have a phone number available if they asked for it, mm -hmm. but no one did. So. Yeah, anyway, I can't imagine going somewhere without my driver's, physical <laughs> driver's license. Yes, you want me to talk about what's happening? Sure. Okay. They so they don't have the app. They may not have the access you have. So this is. But they, but they, the driver's license thing is uh, for. Uh, they can't scan it off their phone. Yeah. It has to be scanned in. Yeah. That's why they have to have the driver's license. No really should ever get pulled over. And that's but, not acceptable. <laughs> but I can tell you, I can tell you what's generally happening with gate sure. security. Please. So as you know, Securitas is their contract company that provides like wonderful service. They kind of moved ahead of. And they kind of moved ahead and been a silo on a technology which would potentially duplicate efforts and create manual work that we potentially can have done by pushing data from the different apps we use to NetSuite in order to make simplified lists. So what I did is I told securities, hold on now. Let's if we're going to make a change with everybody, we kind of need to make it once. And we want to do the simplest thing, not the most complex thing. So a few things are happening with the NetSuite project, which is the big accounting system. And if any of you are involved in your mutuals, you know, this is like really huge and it's one, it's going to be really wonderful. We can be, we can move ourselves into the 20th, 23rd century, right? 
uh, with like our accounting processes. So the next suite is the hub that has everybody's data, like all the individual individual data, all the residents. Potentially, it's a place. So so everything that we use, all of our program applications, have to communicate with NetSuite. For different tournaments and whatnot, there's theoretically, if somebody has to buy a ticket, whatever, or in the case of recreation, we can create rosters for our club members because a lot of clubs have non-residents that are kind of the same thing, same situation. And the idea is you have that, we can push it to dwell live so it's a data-to-data -to -data connection without all these steps for the individual, individual clubs because we're finding, I mean, I think this is going to be a surprise to all of you volunteers that work more as volunteers than you did in your jobs before <laughs> you retired, it's a lot of work coordinating all that administrative stuff. So there's lots of confusion because information has been put out not centrally through IT. So we're having to pull it back a little bit. And what's probably going to happen is we just, we may, we're trying to figure out what to do in the interim. Because even the timeline for all of that net suite, um, usually these rollouts take a while. Um, it's they're going to roll out and have everything functional for all the finance stuff by January. So us getting our peripherals like connected into it, it could be the end of the year. It's probably going to be the beginning of next year. So for now, just make sure they have the licenses. And there is like a list now and then that we're going to send them as long as they get the lists, you know, a week or mm -hmm. ahead of time. It's easy. It's not that it's easier for them, but they know that they're going to have to deal with a little bit of the inconvenience for a while. So that when we change, we just do one change. They're going to change and then it's like, hey, we're not doing that anymore. And it's yeah. populated through four. Or what's something. the name of that system? Next week. Next week. So that's one of the big capital products. If, if you track any of the meetings, it's our it's our own. It's going to replace GenArc. Gen you've ever heard of GenArc? That's an aged out system that goes yeah. back to the junk art. I think it came right after Abacus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I really did. Yeah. So think about it. When you first started it, computers, when you had the, the green screen DOS thing that yeah. comes up, that's general. <laughs> that's and it still is general. And that's that's what's giving us all the trouble. So yeah. we're going to come into the and it's it's a really wonderful product. It is a gold standard now. We should be able to use it well into the future. I know that at the golf shop, basically any group, whether it's eight players or a larger group, it is mandated for my staff that we get those names to do. So that's just something that's just part of our words yeah. before we really, you know, if you go back two years ago, we didn't. Now it's just part of our, whether it's the home and home or the invitational that's coming out, it's just part of our deal to make sure that every group is loaded in there ahead of time uh, from a golf aspect because we want to be as clean as possible and, and try and stay within yeah. what the organization wants us to do. So you're going to have the names of all of the visitors that come for a tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to send that to the to the gate? The gate? Yeah, we do that. We do, we've been doing it all year. You can. All year. <clears throat> yeah, so, we're, you know, so there are these nuanced changes that are being made. I don't know that for any of you, the way you like report your guests and whatnot, that's changing so much. So, oh, again, like, I mean, individually? Yeah. Uh, for your man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just one thing I wanted to add the, it's a whole thing. This whole is, deal is based off of is backed by safety. That's what it is. So, if you have a car that comes to a tournament, it's going to go to the event center or Creekside Park, right? If you have a car coming to visit you and you say, this is someone coming to see me and you give them your name and address, they know where that car is. So let's say there was a wildfire and we had to get rid of people. Are we going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> we had to get rid of people. Get people out of out of Ross. Don't quote me. You know? yeah, yeah. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> we had to get people out of Rossmore. They know how many cars are in a mutual. What they're going to say, or in a zone that is going to have to be evacuated. They know the cars and the license plates that should be there. Your car, every time you come in, is license plate red. Every time you leave, it's license plate red. We, we can give almost a, a very current readout right now 
of the number of cars that are in any given area. So that's why the safety thing. So we have 7,000 cars come into the gated edge. All right. Some of them residents, some of them non residents, contractors, you name it, employees, everything. It's about 7,000 cars come in. We need to know where those cars are at because we've got to figure out how we're going to get these people out of here if there's an emergency. So, really, the license plate, the, the DOB is showing your card and all that stuff. Think of it like this when the people come in. Yes, I know this might be an inconvenience, but it is for safety. So, when you give the list and say, we're having a tournament. And we give a list of 50 people that are going to show up on the tournament. And they know those cars are where they're going to go. They're going to either be a Creekside Park, a Creekside or Park at Event Center. And this is this is just to help us in case of an emergency. What are we dealing with when we're calling for an evacuation of an area? And then if that license plate doesn't go through, right? They give it, you know, evacuate now immediately. Drop everything. Get out of here. They give them so much time to get out. They can do a readout, and if they weren't gone, they they could send the police could then go up in to those individual addresses and say what's going on. How come you're not out there? You know, so that's the reason that all of this stuff came about is for a safety piece of it. And now we're trying to figure out how to make all that work in the system when yeah. we're doing it. So just so you kind of know what the background is, that's why we need the list. We need to know where their cars are at. So what was the purpose of a phone number and or an email address? Because in the dwelling life system, what will happen is they will push to the phone number or the email their pass. And so it's a QR code. And so they can find the record of the person much easier to gauge. So it makes them come through much quicker. Okay. So eventually what she just said there in case that you just so you understand what that is. In the future, when we have an event, you'll just on your phone have your sheet with all the names listed and you send, you can send a group message out to all those people and they all get a text. When they get the text, they hit the text and a bar, uh, a QR code comes up on their phone. No more license, no more anything. All the information's there, or the, it's, it's all in your app. So all they do is they come up and they hold the phone up, they scan the barcode and the car goes through. It's less than three seconds using the barcode. So it just is like, it's just flying through. So that is coming in the future. And that is that is, but that data we're putting the stuff in, you know, it's it's more cumbersome when you have to hand, you know, get the all the data and hand put it in. But soon, uh next year, with the new system, you're gonna be able to do barcos. So currently, currently we don't need to actually ask them for their phone to, to submit their phone numbers or email addresses at the moment i mean the names are given at the moment the reason why we're letting people know that it's because it's just it creates it's like a muscle memory thing mm -hmm. Building like it, whatever you are whatever your collection is for when you register people it's just a really yeah it's it's a way to build a really good habit so when we transition then you're not suddenly saying oh we didn't have that extra column in our excel spreadsheet or however you're getting your your rosters of people. And once a group of people are in your phone that would be coming to one of these events, like a home and away, and you only have to add the new ones in because you just activate the old ones. You just go hit a button and all the new ones are activated again to come in the gate and you just add the new ones. So once it's set up, it just loads. When you say you, who do you mean? Yeah. You the mean the person, whoever in the club you designate to the club, the list. The club function. Yeah. yeah. Not so. So, no, it will be like, let's say Pat is the person who is designating his club to put the list together. It'll be on his phone. He yeah. Said. yeah. I mean, I would, and I would just say we, we don't know if that's the functionality because it could be going through a different system. Yeah. So, again, like, I don't want to talk about too much about, like, actually how it's going to happen mm -hmm. because, again, public safety was doing this because they were working on it well and live before we ever got the general project approved. Mm -hmm. So now, unfortunately, we've had to, to went to the understandable frustration, we've had to say, slow it down because actually that functionality could be better and it could be just managed better through data that we're already collecting. Well, my, my, my issue simply is, you know, the future is going to be great whenever, whatever comes out of this whole thing, that's what we're going to wind up doing and it's going to be wonderful, I'm sure. Uh, but what do we do here and now to make sure that our, our guests can get in here you know, are we just putting names? Are we putting names and phone numbers? And if it's just a email name, address, if it's just a yeah, name, it's funny. It's not a list of names. Oh, that's required right now, like just yeah. a name. Yeah. Okay, okay. reminder to bring their license up. 
Yeah, yeah. the delay <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, interesting thing that happened <laughs> with Okay, thank you. Sorry. You said they're going to scan on us. How about driver's license on the phone when the new system goes? Just gas coming in for one from time business. Well, you're already talking future. Yeah. So, so future when dwelling life is kicking in, it, they won't show a driver's license. They show the QR code on the. No, I mean they're just. I'm just bringing a guest to, to my house. Yeah. For dinner. Send them. Some. Yeah. So they have to scan it in the system. They'll probably have to stay there longer at the gate while they take all that information in hand, put it in because they can't scan off the phone. With that, they need their physical driver's license to scan. So if you're going to show them on the phone, let them know. You're going to have some time at the gate. That's it. But it's, that's their call for putting their license on the phone, oh, not totally our fault. Because they're they not running the city. That. Said it was okay. All my kids and grandkids said, screw it up. I don't have a wallet anymore. Everything's on my phone. That's fine. All they are going to do is Just be delayed long. longer at the gate because they're not using a system that we can scan off of their phone. Even on the new system. So it'll have to, even in the new system. Mm -hmm. So, so they'll have to hand put the stuff in. So that's the reason. If they want to spend time at the gate, they can put it on their phone and let the person have to digitally take everything. That's your name. It's cheap because it's damn fast. <laughs> and this would be the same for like if my son is my permanent guest. So he just, yeah, you know. Yeah, we're assuming everybody has a phone. <laughs> so, so forget about that. Nice. Until <laughs> we, we, we get to that point, you know, uh, you're not going to use it all. It's just, it's just that, like, between now and the time we roll it out, we're going to have like different systems, different coaches. So it hopefully it'll be touchless. What do we write? Who's touched with it? Well, then, like little things like East Bay team play. There were a few people who, at the last minute, had to cancel on another team. So they sent, always a change. Yeah. they sent a uh, replacement. That wouldn't have been sent to the front gate. So no, no, things like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. My question is, there's yeah. our responsibility because I have sent out an email to the board and saying it's really important that you submit this list to the gate for all of your guests that are coming in. And then we hosted, well, we had about 70, 80 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you just automatically have that, or do you still want us to send that to you in order to get it to the gate? But again, there's a last minute change. Sometimes we'll, we'll check it. Yeah. And you, because that's what we lost said. Yeah. Is that my heart is doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. still need it sent to you then. Sure. All right. Thank okay. you. So, oh, that's easy. That's my question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we clear on that? I didn't know this morning. Having your license or ticket off, is that illegal? No, no, it's ticket off. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, this is very, I don't know how here because I mean, this is a very normal thing where people put everything in their phone. And I'm just thinking, well, of course, it's just must be having a half of it to them right now. Is that the vehicle that I guess Carol could show where to get stolen or so. That's why, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're going to do that, you put your license in the, leave it in the car. Yeah. We know the end all the paper cards. Teddy, I don't know how you're going to write all that up. But yeah. that'll be in the <laughs> okay, here, 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 hackers, please. Um, we have 167. We have our scramble tomorrow. Mm. And uh, at 3 o'clock on Creekside, followed by a social at 5.30 in the club room. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Heptic, welcome back. How was your trip? You. Good? Oh, I'll take a moment. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I went to France. We have friends that uh, move there part time, three months at a time. They go over there and they live in southern France. So they met us in Paris, three days in Paris, never been there. Fantastic seeing the sights. And then we took the bullet train down and then experienced rural France, which incredible. Absolutely incredible going shopping for baguettes and oh, cheese, and wonderful. it was pretty neat. Uh, I never thought I'd do anything like that. And then we made it up into the uh, Royal Valley where the castles are. Pretty idyllic trip, and the kids were able to come for part of the time, so couldn't have been better. Thanks for asking. Great time. So, management report uh, April was a busy month. Uh, I can tell you that we did 6,614 rounds, that's a good number. Um, for the year, that gives us a nice number, and we are uh, doing well as far as rounds compared, certainly to last year, but just in general, but 23.8% uh, higher than, than last year's total. Of course, 
last year was a pretty wet year. So we're going to look good compared to that. But I, we're now in the season where we're pretty steady in these months. Uh, when you get it May through September, it kind of not May around here because we don't get any rain. So it's going to be very steady right now. This is the bulk of our play. Um, the green fees were up 13% in there. So I'm, I'm feeling very good about where we are uh, economically and the number of rounds we're doing. And why not? I played just a few holes last night. The golf course is in really nice shape. I think we can all say that. Um, golf shop numbers are also encouraging. Uh, about $129,000 in sales uh, over the 110 last year. Still under budget uh, from what we expect, but I think we'll pick that up. Um, numbers are very good, though, in cart rental, in, um, in golf lessons, and driving range. So that's good. We had a wonderful month. Of play, all the clubs were very active. The high school championship happened for the 25th time, and uh, 21 high schools competed. Always nice to see the juniors out there, really a nice group of young men. Uh, and uh, we had one player who shot 67. He'd be going off to college, he's going to UCLA, so um, he, he played very, very well and had a great round. And that was from the Blue Tees. I'm so they You yeah, it's quite around. And uh, the director of golf and the rest of the staff are gearing up for our, as I said, big move through uh, through the summer. Be very busy. Um, I do want to, did anybody see the article? I hope you guys read the paper, right? Because yeah, this be last right. doing re good. And the first article was about pickleball and it's being held back. But I want to thank Ann publicly here in this meeting for moving other projects and suggesting along. Yeah. There were some things golf-wise, very important. One of the things that I've stressed with Ann, because we meet, is the drought, what's the, what turf reduction yeah. project. I'm not going to call it drought anymore. Um, because drought insinuates the only reason we're doing it is because there's a drought. Really has a long-term effect of just cutting down on water. So we're going to call it turf reduction project from that one. And the turf reduction project, to me, is extremely important. On the 18-hole golf course, we're a little over half done, but we have a lot of tees out there we need to get done. And we need to get those done while we have a contractor who's done all this work and is here in the area. He's saying he's going to retire. I don't want to lose this time. Uh, and if we can get him out there to finish this project within the next 18 months, it would do us all well. One, it helps us budgetarily in the long run. Secondly, he knows what we're doing now. He can almost just say, do that tea. Whereas before, the first couple, like, we don't know, we're, we're kind of experimenting. Now he knows what we want to get done, what it should look like, and he can go out and kind of map it out for him. Boom, he gets it done because he knows what we're looking for. So um, moving that along would be very important right now. I stress that at the end. I see that back in there. So thank you for, for that. That's really important. And there were some other things that pump um, the Lake Liner study which are going to be critical to the long-term success for uh, for the facility. So um, I'm glad we're jumping on that and doing that. So thank you. Um, any questions on, I had a pretty short re report. By the time I got back, this is the best I could do <laughs> in about an hour. Uh, so hopefully that's good. Any other questions about that, though? I'll move right into Blake's report. Yes. I got one small thing, Mark. Yes. I know we're... <laughs> Every time I bring this up, I start to uh, cringe because I know how great a job the, the uh, landscapers are doing. And uh, one of the comments that I've, that I've received is that what's going on with mowing of the tea boxes mm -hmm. on the dollar? They're they're pretty pretty furry. Yeah. So let's 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 get to that. Okay, that's in really Blake's report. Um, so first point is we have not opened a valve for East Bay yet. We're about to. So it is. We're not going to make it to June, okay? Uh, I know Blake, Blake puts these things out there where he's trying to get by on domestic water as long as he possibly can. But right now, the creek's not flowing enough. There's not a flood in the lake. we got to turn the valve on. So that's probably happening today or by the weekend. Uh, temperatures have been good for us. We've only had one bout uh, where it was really hot so far. And we've had good flow. We had a good good winter, not over the top, but good winter. So making it here till uh, late May is, is quite good. And we haven't spent a dime on water yet, but we're about to. So that's that's happening. Um, next stanza is about our problems with equipment. Uh, rough mower has been out for using smaller vehicles. If you see them cutting the rough right now, you'll say, why are they using that little tiny mower for the rough? We don't have our big mowers. It's slowing us down. So that's, that's part of 
in the larger scheme of this whole thing explaining this morning is we have several people on the staff that are not here for all their hours mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. We only have so many man hours and we're having to pick and choose what we get done. And so uh, I'm not crying here, I'm just explaining. Um, so we have a large problem getting well done as you can see in the explanation there. Uh, it's being sent to the distributor for repairs. We can't do it here. We really don't know when it's gonna get back. The replacement mower was ordered 15 months ago and it's scheduled to go into production in August. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, that's where we are on that. Um, the lack of manpower continues is our biggest problem. We've not been fully staffed since last summer. Uh, a lot of sick leave and other things have occurred with illnesses. So we are generally in a staff of 13. We're lucky if we have seven. If you have seven, you're doing the bare minimum. Um, you're getting the holes cut. You're getting the greens cut. Uh, you're doing what mowing you can with the operators and having the right mowers. But some of the projects are just not happening that we want to get done. We've had to put potentially, I, sh I should say, definitely postpone essential maintenance tasks like the edging of our bunkers. I know the golf course looks great. I can tell you right now, it bugs me. Go out there and you see along the tops of the bunkers, there's grass going in. We haven't had the time to get to they it. They were working on that yesterday. They're trying. Oh, we have invitationals yeah. coming up. So I'm working with Blake and we're trying to make it look good for the invitationals coming up. But it's a major project. It takes time. And we only have so many people. And so it's we've done the golf show number 10 too. We've done it. <laughs> we, we did that before team play. Okay. And the hillside. Because I told Blake, those two things, if those don't happen, I'm going to hear about it from team play. So we did it. <laughs> <laughs> So I anticipated that. Do those two things have to happen before you? You're on it. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay. So um, uh, irrigation of fairways and the roughs, both courses have not taken place. The yardage stripes and the cart pass haven't been painted in two years. Yeah, I'd love to have that done. We don't have the time. <laughs> um, we'd love to put those posts up. We don't have time. Um, we will get to it. It's on the list. But it isn't going to happen next week because right now we're having a hard time just mowing fairways, mowing greens, and then getting the bunkers ready. But that's the answer. We're, we're, that's the answer. Well, that's, why that answer. <laughs> that's why we. That's why we. I'm. I'm not saying we're not going to do it. I'm just saying that that particular project is not real important when you look at the scheme of things. Because I'm sure you'd much rather have your bunkers rigged, your greens mowed, your poles placed, and your fairways mowed. Much more important. The basics right now, and that explains tees. Tees were were not on the the normal cycle we would do them as you've seen us do it for 20 something years. That's kind of a backseat because of these other things. So will we catch up? Yeah, we will catch up. Um, but it's just going to take us a little bit of time. I kind of alluded to this last month, mm -hmm. but we're in the same cycle. We just only have so many hours. Can I make a request? When they do catch up with the T's, mm -hmm. try to get the uh, par three T's done first because mm -hmm. some of us don't use T's, T up. Mm -hmm. When we hit off the par threes, mm -hmm. and they hit off the uh, the thicker, what do you even call it? Grass. Some of that stuff is real hay. Mm -hmm. So you hit that, and all you do is just pick up a lot of hay. Yeah, and uh, it it makes it difficult. Well, you mentioned a few other things here. Eighty percent of the two thousand one hundred sprinkler heads. Think about that. Two thousand one hundred sprinkler heads. Anybody ever have a lawn? I've got eight in my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I got eight. <laughs> 2,100 sprinklers have not been, 80% of them have not been trimmed yet. They should be, because we're now in a season where we're sprinkling and we need to get those trimmed. That means that the guys got to go out there and trim those things. We haven't had a manpower to do that. So again, striping, I'd love to get the striping done or the hillside pulls up. 50% um, of the valve boxes and drain boxes needed are overgrown. We need to get to those. Um, greens have not been verticut. We want to do that. So we're hoping to do that sometime soon. So there's just some real basic stuff. We need to get this done. And that's why some of these other projects are just going to have to wait mm. until we get the basics done. You, you can't get a hire temporary employee. We have, a union think those contract. we have a union contract. So right. the answer to that is no. Is there anything that the clubs could do? No. <laughs> we have a union contract. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take the work away, but it's no, I understand. That, that the clubs can do. Make those holes for us. We can get them made. And, and, and get them made, and we'll take them, and when we can get that project done, we'll do it. So okay. if you can do that, 
Do it. Okay. Do whatever you want. Tell them whatever you want. I don't care what color they are. Whatever you guys decide. Well, I don't want them red. I don't want them yellow. Want them <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, and don't make them green because that's too much. I don't know what you know, but yeah. you're right. Tell them color. Maybe blue or something. Yeah, pink. Some kind of barber pole. Barber pole. Yeah, well, I'll come up with something. Okay, and and I'll, I'll, I'll follow on this now. We just talked about every 10 yards or every. Oh, yards I, I, can, yards. I, I can say every 20. Okay. Every 20. Maybe even six of them. Okay. Okay. If, you had, if we had a half a dozen, that'd be good. Also, we can see if you know if it works. We're, we're all thinking it's going to work. Yeah, you know, we'll go out there and put them up, and then people go. Well, I you know, I, 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 yeah, no matter what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, now I explained all the clubs that no ones are not out of bounds. You know, yeah. they're not, you know, they're for just, you know, we got to explain what they are and how they're to be used because the first thing people are going to ask is, what move them? Well, yeah, right. right. The, the, the first thing that everyone <clears throat> at least approaches me with is, uh, what are we doing on that thing? Yeah. Yeah. We don't know where it goes. And so you kind of explain to them what we're hoping to do. Yeah. So, that's the last 30 years. What have they done for the last 30 years? I don't know. I've had that for years. Two guys are walking forward. They climbed on the hill. It's exactly yeah. what they did. Two guys. So you've yeah. got 13. Total, right? And the grounds crew. And I mean, they're well, all we have, we have 13 spots. We have 12 actually. So you only have We've been open place. a spot for quite a while. Yeah. A long time. You need more. I just have so that we just hired someone. Uh, we have someone out on long term leave. Don't know if they'll ever be back. Uh, we have, we've had sickness. We've had uh, uh, vacations. I mean, I've shared this with Ann, uh, and I don't think it's any problem saying this. The staff I have on the golf course is older um and uh they need more time off they have the maximum vacation it's not like it's a young person only has two weeks most of them have four weeks you need more people well that's four weeks gone and i've been played at a really nice study which i i've shared with Ann. it's right here uh on the number of hours lost uh this last year lost meaning to Anything, anything. It's broken down. Sickness, vacation. But when you look at the number of hours gone, well, they're not on the golf course. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of stuff to get done. And it's just because we just don't have the numbers. It's just we're at a point where we have a staff that's pretty mature. They have the right to stay vacation. I think we all know that. And sometimes they get more sick now than they would, or they have, maybe have an injury because they're older. Things happen. Aren't you averaging like seven or eight people a day, but you have 11 on stock or something like that? Well, so 12. We have a 12, and yeah. Yeah. So they're always because of vacations, leaves, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So it's me. really a stress factor on Blake to try and get the jobs done that we need to get done, mm -hmm. realizing that every day he walks in and goes, Well, there's what we need to get done, and we have that many. That's what we're dealing with that every day. Right. And so it's, it's hard. You know, so, I, would, I would give them kudos though, because when you walk in the golf course like I did yesterday, pretty playable still. Yeah. Very nice facility. It looks good, you know, for the most part. I see things. You might see things. You go, mm, it's a little shaggy here and there, but you know, it's still, like you said, they enjoyed the golf course the other day at the team player. It's not bad, but some of the finer points, we're not getting, we realize that we're not getting those done. We just don't have the manpower to get to the next level. You know, so we're, uh, I heard a statistic uh, recently. Mm -hmm. Whenever someone says anything to me about, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? The statistic I heard, and I don't know that it's true, but it kind of shuts them off. So, said, Please tell me what it is. <laughs> it's it's simple. It says, you know, Contra Country, mm -hmm. Country Club has 28 yeah. landscape employees for 18 holes. Right. Yeah. Right. No, that's We've got 13 for 27 holes plus long bowling. Yeah. So that Quiets it down right away. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, yeah. Then I use that one with the board explaining our budgetary situations. I, Ted, you've been at some of those annual meetings uh, when we talk about we, we really, um, we work the staff pretty hard here for what we get. Um, and, you know, that's why one reason we don't look like country house. You know, we, we understand that. That's part of my explanation to people. We understand we're not Contra Costa or Diablo. And that's one of the reasons. We run thin and we're not able to do necessarily everything. We know what we can. 
But um, yeah, some of these golf courses are have you know twice as many staff, and and they <laughs> they literally have only eighteen holes rather than twenty seven. So yeah, can I add good news? Yeah, good sure. I usually walk, and I didn't yesterday because it was the classic, and so oh, yeah. the golf cart, right? Which I had charged and everything. Yeah, and towards the end, I had three holes to go. It went. Mm, that's right. Your cart broke down. My cart broke down. So after I got through and everything, Raj, R A J, mm -hmm. he what? came. He came. He picked me up here. Mm -hmm. Took me to my golf cart. Mm -hmm. I was able to turn it back on and get enough power to just take it home. Mm -hmm. But he was so nice, and he came back and he followed me to make sure. So there's some good news. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> the people who were Lex, there. Lex, our foreman. If we have a problem, I think Jackie in that case called Lex. Say, could you help her out? And we're always going to probably say yes. Yeah. We're going to try and help everybody out the best we can. Um, but. There you go. We're still trying to do customer service. So, so if you can pass that on to I will. Blake. I'll I'll make I will do that. Absolutely. Thank you. That's a good story. Yeah. Okay. Bad news. Just uh here, Craig Blake takes care of the bottom line. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. 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 So well, that's oh, one man that really the way our staff is set up, we have a 13, but we have really have 12 right now. Look, we have an opening. All of those remaining 12, one is dedicated to the uh, lawn bowling. So what happens in the morning, we have supposedly 10, but as we just talked, seven or eight are here. One of those seven or eight is up to lawn bowling because we got to work on lawn bowling and, uh, and get them set up ready to go. So he comes down after we set up the golf course and now he's on the, on the golf course in the afternoon. Um, but yeah, that's just something else we take care of. Does lawn bowling pay for that? It's in the lawn bowling budget. <coughs> so yes. The budget. It's in their, their, their club. They take care of that. They take care of that one man up there. So he's on our staff because he does come down and help here. And the way it works out is um, when when uh, when we need to verify or do big projects up at lawn bowling, everybody from the golf course goes up there and gets that done for that one day or two days. And then he's here on his other days. It works out. Spoiler alert: at the next yeah. board meeting, I'll be doing a presentation on exclusive use amenities. And things like this because it really shows there's like one volume is the only type of a single use facility single club really you know when it's not used technically it's open to the community but um just to kind of show like the resources being directed to things yeah and and as a side note lawn bowling i think i've talked you know three, but I'll, I'll say is lawn bowling has um stepped up and joined uh, um, uh another organization and they and they they would like to uh, have uh, better conditions for trying to do that for them too, but right? it's you know it's hard on their budget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the budget is what the budget is. Yeah, all right. I have a simple request. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't require the manpower really, but the uh, little green boxes that we um, mm -hmm. we had the shop made. Is there a yeah. chance that we could get some more of those? Because I noticed they're spaced out pretty far, and I'm constantly picking up broken teeth and using them. But I noticed there are a lot of broken teeth and there's no box on one of those holes. So there are a lot of holes that have no boxes. Any channel yeah. not, it makes more. I think the goal was right now to have one on every white tee and one on every red tee. Okay, I'll check on that. Okay, I'll check one per tee. Yeah. would be helpful. One per tee. Okay, I'll check on yeah, that. Because I have to look around where I'm usually picking up all the broken tee. Yeah, me too. Even though we have the boxes, the drawers might not know that the broken tee go yeah. into the Okay. <laughs> so I pick them up when I see them there and I toss them into the box, but I have to look because the box is, I don't know if it's going to be blue, white, red because it's different on both. It's yeah. Gosh, okay. I'll make sure we have one on, I think the might right now be have one on the white and one on the red. Those are the most yeah. used teams. Yeah. You must have some left over, don't you? We, we have. Some. I know we have. Some. Let us know. We'll go. Let us know if you need yeah. one. Sure. But but I, we, I, I know we have no box, so I'll check. Okay. Yeah. Are you done? So, Mark, yeah, I was doing the math here and I'm looking at uh cars being sold, mm -hmm. uh, in that fully rainy seasons and stuff. Yeah, uh, just let's just talk about the nine. So, the first quarter, about 37 people buy them. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like there. Well, no, let's I just did the math. On you it. did the math. On that's it. The 32, 480, is that what you're looking at? I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at the 82, 25 by uh, 225 on the first quarter. Here. 
Just just on the on the cart being bought. That would be that 8325 though. That would okay. Yeah, that would be though for just the first quarter. Yeah. I, yeah, Great. I gotcha. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm and I get and it comes out to about 37 people. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a good thing that I'm trying to work on here. Yeah. And then on the second quarter, we had a jump up to 47 people who bought those. Yeah. So how can we encourage people to do this more? Because if you go down to the next line in the green sphere, if you look at the nine bowl, mm -hmm. we have um, uh, 485 plays mm -hmm. that people paid full pay on yeah. that are not buying into the long term. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of people playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I did it. I did, to get that number, the 485, I took the 14,550 divided by $30 yeah. and came up with 485 people. Would it, would it be advantageous for us to encourage people to buy quarterly on those? Because I, I'm not sure how well it's advertised that that's available. So, but that's a lot of people, 485 people playing at $30 a shot now. Yeah. The other side of that is we probably pick up a little more money yeah. from the golf club doing this, but it would be nice to have the money up front, you know. And, and yeah. I, I guess my answer to that is we make more money when they pay daily. Yeah. So uh, it it it, it could shoot us a little bit. People definitely walk in and they make a decision. I don't know what all of you do in this room, but I assume you're just like everybody else that walks in there. At the beginning of the year, you go. Well, I'm gonna be gone in March. Right. I'm gonna be traveling, so I think I'll get just you know what I mean. You, they're doing or the math in their heads individually. Yeah, it's very first quarter. A lot more betting on that, which I've always told people is silly. Just buy it in yeah. ten years. It'll average out. Yeah. You know, you might get a rainy year, and then the next year it's a drought. It all works out. If you just got the annual card, that'd be this. I tell that would be the smart thing to do. If you're gonna play golf at all, get the annual card. Yeah. It'll work out. There are certain people who don't play in the winter time, but somebody's having a hip replacement. Yeah. If somebody's having a hip replacement, they're going to miss the first quarter, then they're buying the last two quarters. Somebody's going to be gone. Somebody's got some. So it, it's interesting to watch people's mind work on how, even if they're long term card holders, they may say, I'm going to take the first half off because mm -hmm. I'm going to Europe. Okay. You know, I, so it's, it's hard. It, it's probably going to vacillate like that for the individual, what's best for them. But I don't, I think it's fine to program the way it is. I don't know if advertising. No, I'm just thinking of how to game it. So we yeah. so we make more money. That's all I'm thinking. Well, the best way to get game it is the best the best way to game it make more money is get rid of the annual cards. Yeah. And do uh and do a uh, uh per play fee. But you slow the please game. don't do that though. No. <laughs> so, so, here, so I'm thinking that would kill us in the off shop. That's it's I, like every green field. That's where right. I look at the cards doing at making yeah. the golf shop run easier because yeah. I can just whip open the door and say, hey, big side 230 and I'm out the door. And That's exactly what you look like, Ted, when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and we can get out. Or like when I come in today, I had nine people playing today with me. And so I just came in and I could punch it all in. It just gets in. I can get, do that. But when I come in, I'm already checked in. Just, you know, yeah, I'm, the, I'm the, there, so. the annuals, the annuals, the quarterlies definitely make check-in easier. So we appreciate having that program just at the front counter for that purpose. Um, I don't know that we necessarily need to I guess I would say we're we're doing fine. I would just, you know, people are using the program how they need it. And if if they find that they get, I have no problem telling them 72 is the break even for an annual card. Yeah. Quarterly, I'm happy to go there and say, oh, I need to do, you know, 14, 18 rounds for this to work for you this quarter. I'm you know, just sharing the information. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So I I, I think it's fine. I do. Okay. okay. I just was trying to figure out how why so many people pay because it's cumbersome. If you play a lot, it's cumbersome to go mm -hmm. in there for the golfer too to come in. You got to say if there is a line or not a line. Then you got to come up. Then you got to pay. You know, you, a lot of extra movements and stuff. When you can just, it's I like simple. I'm here, mm. and you go out and you play. I do too. I like. I don't. Simple. I don't want to. I pay. I pay every quarter all yeah. the time because I don't care. Rain, weather doesn't bother me. Yeah. I don't concern myself with it. I might not get the golf because you know the golf course shut down or whatever reason. But I have never lost out. In a yeah. round season. I don't want to be too morbid here, but it's it's true for years and years. There's always the, the group that's getting a little older and they just don't want to get that annual card because oh <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, I'm sorry, but that is true. Yeah. That is true. Maybe we can have a fight. Why don't we leave that on the table? <laughs> Maybe we can have a fight with this and for the ones who paid by the kid, where they could be a beneficiary of the last, the last three months of the card. <laughs> Bequeath my last three months. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I was just wondering yeah. if we could do this. Okay. We got to go. All right, uh, Mr. Chief Marshal. Well, hey, I do have one simple thing. Kiddos, uh, Tom Beckett, he took over for five weeks. Tom Beckett, gone, yeah. Gone overseas. And you mean five minutes? Yeah, he did a great job. Permanently gone? or No, 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 just gone oh. over for seven, eight, eight, eight birthday. Oh. His kids sent him over there. So you have to move it. I have a very quick Tom Beckett story yesterday. Yeah. I'm trying to hear the story, but very quick. Yesterday, we had a group go out. It was a uh, resident, three guests. Uh, we checked in three. All of a sudden, they're gone, and we realized we thought we saw them leave as a foursome. So we called Tom and said, Tom, he's on the fifth hole. Could you go to, like, number two and just see if there are four players? Where does play? So he came up to them, and they immediately knew. They said, yeah, I forgot to pay. He says, can I give you? He says, well... You can give me the cash and I'll take it in right now. But if it's a credit card, you need to head in right now and take care of it. Tom's it. But he collected $60 in cash. That's what they <laughs> brought it to us. So he, he was our partial green sweep. Was <laughs> he the one who was marshaling us? Yes. Because yeah. I didn't know who that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he uh, seems temporary. He's also bringing so he, a yeah. He's <laughs> away at the moment. John is back. Today. Oh, he's back there. Yeah. But he's back there today. So your hearing is yeah no problem no problem i just have a little fast question i know the minutes should run along <clears throat> i don't see anybody out marshalling later in the day well you can open your eyes five and six because i uh, you know i see a lot of stuff after hours and i just let me go under the two three top kids but how many how many twilight are we going to have Okay, 160. Oh, good. Yeah, that's all. Now, how many minutes do we have our invitation? About 12. <laughs> the, the, the group, the men's group has changed over the years. Yes, we we the, I think it's 50 right now. We've got to get more. Yeah. I'm trying to, Monday, I'm trying to just to get those uh, pullovers ordered, and I need that number. So we had that discussion at Langston. Okay. Last good. Week. My, uh, the request to me was, uh, you find is it invitations? So, is it just member? Uh, yes, and uh, that's the intent of it. Mm -hmm. However, if we don't have the numbers, we're going to look to open it up for number member. Okay, we know it's unfortunate. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, I don't believe there's any unfinished business. Does anybody have any new business? No new business. My only new business in okay. Sam's, I've got Sam was sitting behind us. Is he allowed to write everything that just happened? They said, You can write everything except Ted's comments. <laughs> okay, the uh, next meeting will be June 14th in the regular club room at 9 a.m. and the meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thank you.